Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to another episode of the Melanin Reset Podcast. I am your host, Valerie Wynn, and in this episode, I want to tell you three reasons why I no longer identify as Christian or even as religious. It has been a very personal journey for me that started in 2017, and it has been a journey that I have not taken lightly. I had been in the church most of my life, and as a child, I attended Christian private schools. I was baptized at the age of nine. I grew up in the black church or the black Baptist church, and I was the church girl licensed to minister or preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in 2004. So trust me when I say this was not an easy decision, but it has been a fulfilling and enlightening one. Before we get too far in, do me a favor by hitting the like and the subscribe buttons. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. But let's get into the three reasons why I no longer identify as Christian or religious or why I left Christianity or the beloved black church. The first reason I left the church or no longer identify as Christian is because the spiritual journey is a highly personable one. It's not to be organized or regulated. Christianity is defined as a religion based on the person and teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it is regulated by its beliefs and practices. Religion is the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Organized religion is a structured system of faith or worship, especially one followed by a large number of people, such as Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. Organized religion is also known as institutional religion. Institutional religion is a religion in which belief systems and rituals are systematically arranged and established. Organized religions theoretically enable people to understand the world and be part of a historic community of believers. Some see it as a basic component of human life. Spirituality, on the other hand, allows a person to be human. We are human beings. U H U, meaning spirit, and man, M A N meaning a living soul in a person. Oftentimes in the church, we saw human beings as a person to be used or as a person to be changed or who needed change, a person who needed to be fixed or or helped, a person who needed to be convinced, a person who needed to be evangelized to, or a person to be saved or controlled instead of seeing them just as a human being. We are human, divine, internal spirits as a living soul. There's a difference between indoctrination and liberation. And there is a significant difference between religion and spirituality. The very essence of spirituality is to be constantly aware of the oneness of all and at the same time celebrate the uniqueness of the individual. Spirituality is the connection to something bigger than ourselves. It is a search for meaning in life and a universal experience. So the first reason I left Christianity is because my spiritual journey is a highly personal one. It is a highly personal one. 
The second reason I left Christianity or the church is because my mental health was more important than people pleasing, even with my own family. My mental health was more important than what was considered popular or the right thing to do for the black African people in American society. Whether we want to admit it or not, going to church or even joining a church at some point in your life was and still is expected, especially in the black community. In some families, becoming a member of Christianity is a family tradition or any religion for that matter. It's a family tradition. And quite frankly, it is popular in American society. Going to church is a part of networking. It's like a social club. It's a place or atmosphere for entertainment. And for some, it's a significant part of their identity. It is intentional self-indoctrination. And if you're not careful, it is voluntary oppression into what I have come to know and not feel is one of the world's greatest hustles. And I'm not talking about the money or tithing. It is important to understand that I would never tell anyone not to believe nor have faith, nor will I judge anyone by what I was conditioned to believe. I was once where some of you are and still want to be, and I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. What I am saying to you is that for me, it's no longer for me, but it was a significant part of my upbringing, my journey, and my purpose. However, I found peace when I prioritized my healing and part of my healing was learning who I am. And I needed to learn who I was apart from who people, including my own family, said I was. I needed to learn who I was apart from who my family's generational religion of Christianity said I was. I had allowed too many limits of other people's perceptions to become my perceptions. I needed to know myself apart from the constructs and limits that define me. I had to start defining me for me. I needed to start living in the true fullness of my life. I had to start living the life that I desired and I had a sincere desire to know more. I wanted to know more. It was intense and it was something I could not shake. It was a calling and I needed to walk in the fullness of my purpose. So the second reason I left the church was because my mental health was more important than people pleasing. Which brings me to my third reason why I left the church and the religion of Christianity. The third reason I left the church is because my purpose is my purpose. Your purpose is your purpose. A calling is not always a religious calling, but it would always lead you to your purpose. Understand, I'm very familiar with a calling, so to speak. I've had callings all my life. I have been called to teach. I have been called to preach. I have been called to speak and I have embarked on all these callings with great seriousness and intention. Every mentor that I have had um, agreed that these gifts that I have or this calling, if you will, was solely for the kingdom of God or the church. However, I still felt a strong gravitational pull into another direction, into a direction without limits or fear. The pull was in a direction of unbounded mental clarity in a healing not found in the church. 
Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Whenever I sell, sought counsel or sound counsel in the church, the answer was always the same. Just pray about it. You know, the saints have a way of saying just pray about it whenever they want to silence you or the issue is too big for them to handle. But they want you to stay encouraged. So just pray about it. I used it. I used those phrases. I used it for issues that I didn't want to deal with. I'll pray about it. Let's pray about it. Just pray about it. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. All of those phrases included prayer, but can be used to silence contention. It can be used to take away holding someone or even yourself responsible or accountable for any actions or behavior. Let God handle them. God will handle them. God got it. God is able. God will provide, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that none of this is true, but what I am saying is that these are some very common colloquialisms in the black church and they're used in the black church. And they can also be used in a dismissive manner towards people genuinely seeking answers. But anyway, the church, the church didn't have the answers that I saw. It didn't have the answers that I needed. And I struggled. And I struggled big time. I struggled big time. I remember vividly one Sunday, I was in the women's Sunday school class and my interpretation of the, of the scripture that was the topic of the class was different from the pastor's wife interpretation. And she scolded me like uh, hot grease with cayenne pepper. Uh, I sat silently and I didn't push back, even though I knew I was correct in my interpretation. By the time she got to the end of her lesson, she said, this may have been what Minister Wynn was trying to say and closed her Bible with an attitude. She never apologized or acknowledged that she was wrong in her teaching. After the class, several of the ladies in attendance came up to me in the foyer just to let me know that they too had gotten the same interpretation from the text and that they thought the pastor's wife didn't handle herself appropriately. They said the elders, the responsibility of the elders is to teach the younger ladies in love. You see, it was always about in love in the church. Well, it's like the great Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, but they will never forget how you make them feel. I never went back to her Sunday school class after that. Um, and I guess some of you may say, well, that's church hurt or church abuse. But for me, for me, it was an example of don't voluntarily indoctrinate yourself to become the mean church lady. Okay. Okay. It wasn't long after that experience I started to see the church in different eyes. Um, I, I noticed that the church didn't have very much tolerance for differences from their perspective or their perceptions, or they, they didn't have tolerance, for, for, you know, of differences from their way of life. It was either their way or hell. And I began to notice that the church, that the church acted from a place of fear in voluntary indoctrination and voluntary oppression. Understand, I had belonged to only three churches in my life. I started my education as a child in a predominantly white Christian private school. So my decision to walk away from the church was not one that was made lightly. It was what I thought at the time was an extremely unique journey. But I now have learned otherwise. It, it was like it was like I was being summoned to unlearn everything that I knew 
and go down a totally different path, an unpopular path, a path away from the church and away from everything I thought I knew. It, it was time for me to turn inward, to prioritize my mental healing and making the, the start making the necessary changes to, to grow into my best self. I felt what I call now the ancestral tug, the choosing of my ancestors. So my journey of learning who I was began. And the first step I took was learning my DNA. Learning my African ancestry led me into a deep study of African, ancient African history, ancient African civilizations, ancient African empires, and the African spiritual system. The study of Kemet, what we now know as Egypt, but the study of Kemet introduced me to the foundation of Western religions, including Christianity. It introduced me to the origins of certain Bible stories. Um, and it even introduced me to the origin of Jesus. Kemet introduced me to African spiritual science systems and things that are known and proven to be true. Like we say, hashtag facts. Kim gave me evidential truths that I could no longer deny nor ignore. Little did I know that I will be placed on a path to be truly, truly liberated through knowing myself. Hashtag know myself, know thyself. If you follow me or you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll see me in certain posts with hashtag know thyself. When you know thyself or when you know yourself, no one can define you. You will define yourself without limitations or the perceptions of others. In the United States of America, black African Americans feel the brunt of all the burdens. It is our people who are disproportionately slain in the street by state-sponsored murderers, and we still have people doing the bare minimum. Just pray about it. Praying instead of acting. Like I said before, phrases like pray about it, thoughts and prayers, and only God can fix it are all phrases to disassociate themselves from the actions needed or the accountability or the responsibility. What happened to God uses human agents? What happened to that? Or is that, that only for the church and only for the church's purposes? What if I told you that most of the antics you witness and have grown accustomed to in the black church is straight from African spirituality or the African spiritual science systems? but it has been intentionally distorted, repackaged, and sold back to you? What if I told you that? What if I told you that your belief is based upon the greatest story ever stolen? What if I told you that? What if I told you that the Bible is a plagiarized distortion of African spirituality used for political reasons? What have I told you? Again, I'm not trying to convince you, but it will behoove you to learn your history and the history of African people. You see, I'm a critical thinker and I'm a scholar. I believe in research. I believe in evidence that can be proven. Understand Africans were kidnapped, stolen, captured as prisoners of war and sold out of Africa into slavery. First from Portugal on the side of East Africa, then from West Africa as part of the transatlantic slave trade or the Portugal slave trade or the East Africa slave trade or the Arab slave trade, okay? But the slave trade that they focus on the most in America is the transatlantic slave trade, okay? And these Africans were sold by colonizers into slavery by colonizers yes i know they say that africans some africans sold other africans into slavery 
but it wasn't the child of slavery that was experienced here in America that they thought they were selling them into. Okay, these same colonizers took and stole African artifacts, excavated the graves, and placed their findings in some of the world's greatest museums. They conquered some of the greatest African civilizations, kingdoms, and empires, and hid all of this history from us in plain sight, then lied to us and said we came from an uncivilized people, when in fact, we came from a the people who started civilization. It would behoove you to learn your history. Before Adam, there was Atom. Before Mary, there was Aset. Before Jesus, there was Peru. Before the sun, S-O-N, there was the sun, S-U-N. Before Moses, there was Thotmus. Before Yah, there was a moon, or what we say after prayers, amen. Before the cross, there was the unk. Before the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, there was the Father, Mother, and Child. Before any religion, there was the netter. And the netter is transcribed as a deity or divine attributes of nature. In other words, the universe. And before the Bible, we had the meta nature or what is called the divine words or the sacred text. The entire Bible mimics ancient African texts called the coming forth by day or what we know now or what has been translated into what we know as the Egyptian book of the dead. But we got to be careful. We got to be ever so careful with the scholars that we use when we're looking at what is being called Egyptian. Whenever we see the word Egyptology, we know that is a white scholar. So we have to be ever so careful when we're studying that. Okay. But anyway, the church, the black church, I would venture to say, that the black church today is not the same black church that got our ancestors through 246 years of chattel slavery, nor 100 years of Jim Crow. You see, this Western theology that we know as Christianity in the United States was forced upon enslaved Africans and free African people, for real. And the Bible was used to justify the slavery. However, we were told that the enslaved Africans used it to make a path to freedom by some white theologians and white historians. Be careful with that. Is Christianity a white man's religion? Absolutely not. Not at all. But it is definitely part of a complex and stolen legacy of African people. What we need to understand is African Egyptians were black Africans. They were Comedians and Kushites. But don't believe me, research it for yourself. Some of the stories included in the Bible originated in Kemet. To understand all of this, you must understand your history. You have to understand world history. You need to understand world geography, the push and pull factors of migration. Um, you need to understand world geology. Um, anthropology, astrology, and the history of ancient Africa. At some point, you have to put the Bible down and pick up a non-fictional history book. Have you ever asked yourself why the most segregated time of the week in 2022, even in 2022, the most segregated time of the week is a Sunday morning? Have you ever questioned why not too many black preachers have ever preached in a predominantly white church? Have you ever asked yourself why so many white evangelicals supported cheating lately? I'm trying hard not to beat up on the church, even though the church don't mind beating up on some of us. Case in point, July 29, 2022. That was the release date for Beyonce's album, Renaissance. If you didn't know, Renaissance is act one of a trilogy, meaning act two and act three is on the horizon. 
Anyway, Renaissance Drop and the entire album is a vibe. But the track that made church folks lose their minds was Church Girl. When I tell you they lost their minds, they started acting like Beyonce made the bop for them. Now, I'm not trying to say exactly who Beyonce's audience is, but what I can tell you is that the condemnation that came from men and women of the church was unmerited and unfounded. But let me provide just a tad bit, just a tad bit of clarity for you. Number one, church folk took issue with Beyonce's church girl because it contained a sample of Twinkie Clark's Center of Thy Will. And if y'all know anything about the church and have been involved in the church, you are familiar with the Clark sisters. And to me, the church should have known better than to put out this sort of attack. In other words, they was, you know, put it out there like Twinkie didn't know what the, how the song was going to be used and maybe she didn't know. But what I can tell you is Twinkie herself thanked Beyonce for using the sample. And I'm sure Twinkie got a check, okay? And I'm sure Beyonce's team received Twinkie's permission before sampling Center of Thy Will on the Church Girl track. Even Dorinda Clark Cole came out and said, y'all leave Beyonce alone because there's something in there. She even understood. Okay, so here's my thing. The Clark sisters are very aware and versed in the antics of the church, being that their own mother, Maddie Moss Clark, was strongly reprimanded and stripped of her title as the international president of the church's music department by, by the church. Specifically, the Church of God in Christ. For performing on stage with her daughters at the 1983 Grammy Music Awards show. So it is important to understand the church has not evolved all that much. Okay? But the world has. All right. Number two, church folks took issue with Beyonce's church girl because the lyrics encourage women to let go and to love on themselves now some of you may say well the 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 the, the limits was cussing there's a difference between cussing and cursing and we'll talk about that on another podcast but understand that but the lyrics on church girl encourage women to let go and to love on themselves let's just say that self-care is paramount you can't pour from an empty cup and so is a woman's body autonomy, okay? You are in control of your own body. But church folks had a problem with that because it goes against their teachings. Oppression. Remember I said if you're not careful, you'll voluntarily oppress yourself. But it goes against their teachings and what they are supposed to believe in. Beyonce encouraged them to drop it like a thotty, drop it like a thotty. She didn't call them out of their names. She told them to drop it like one. Anyway, and ladies, let me tell you something. If you're in the church and you married, okay, do handle your business. All right? Anyway, anyway, that ain't what this podcast is about. That ain't what this podcast is about. She did not call them out of their names, as some proclaim from the pulpit. But she did encourage the church girls to be authentic and to enjoy themselves. You see, the church is in denial if they think those church girls cannot out twerk every other female twerker. Anyway, anyway, point number three about uh, Beyonce's church girl. Church folk took issue with Beyonce's church girl because I just want to provide clarity for you. They took issue with it. Because Beyonce herself testified that she found herself on the other side. Now, what did she mean by that? What did, what did she mean by that? She found herself on the other side. And, and on that other side, it ain't no hustle. She found herself 
on the other side, if you have been following Beyonce, okay, if you have been following her, you are a fan, you know that she has took a deep dive into African spirituality. Okay, now let me explain something to you guys about African spirituality. It's not just one thing. There are several things. There are several aspects of it. Because understand, Africa is not monolithic. Okay? There are 54 countries in Africa. There are different tribes. There are different kingdoms. Okay? But there's 54 countries as we know it today. But there's the, the African traditional religion that Beyonce has, 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 has um, taken a deep dive into if you understand what African spirituality is. Anyway, in her, in her song, Church Girl, she say, nobody can judge me but me. I was born free. Now, that goes against everything that the church teaches because the church teaches you were born a sinner and only God can judge you. But guess who God is? Nobody can judge me but me. Anyway, I felt this one part of her chorus with every fiber of my being. You see, what church folk don't understand is the psychology or the psychological and mental scare attacks of old no longer work like a charm. Okay? People are searching outside of the church for the answers that they've been seeking. Some people are finding their roots, so to speak. Some church folk and Christians alike, because, you know, I can go into a deep dive of the difference between actual Christians, authentic, the true worshipers of God and church folk. But anyway, that's for another podcast. Some church folks and Christians alike have called it the great falling away. And that's exactly what it is. People are choosing not to walk blindly by faith and have chosen the journey of deconstructing and decolonizing their Christ. You see, Christ is the Greek word Christos, which means the chosen one or the anointed one. When you look into the African spirituality and you look at the history of it, the chosen one was Haru. He came or was here before Jesus. Anyway, that's a that's 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 a subject for a different podcast. But it means Christos, which is the chosen one or the anointed one. When you study ancient African history, you find the story of a set, a saw, and Haru, or what some have called the original trinity of man, woman, and child. But it's deeper than that. I bet you didn't even know they have seven trinities. Anyway, but let's put a pin in that for right now. That's that's subjects for a different podcast. Okay, we need to place a pin in it right now because the Greeks, the Romans, and the Europeans, Europeans covered all their bases to make sure that ancient African or comedic mystery system of the concept of God within stayed a mystery or hidden from us, especially by the use of religion. You see, the Bible teaches all sorts of things. It teaches about the reprobate mind. Oh, she didn't go on crazy. She black side. No, God didn't gave over to a reprobate mind if they believe something different from you. It teaches about itching ears when you decide to go outside of the church to seek the answers that you're looking for. It teaches you about the last days when they don't know the answers to why certain things are happening politically. Okay, and it teaches you about fear, the the eternal damnation of hell. We are eternal beings and heaven and hell is a state of mind. Okay, I would venture to say that the writers of the Bible, those who canonized the Bible and translators who later colonized the Bible, covered all of the basis for every well founded rationale to keep you credulous and unquestioning. Not supposed to question God. It's okay to question. They knew that the truth 
could not be hidden since our ancestors left everything in stone and on stone. These colonizers shot the noses off the evidence left in Egypt. Okay, okay. What 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 happened to the noses on the pharaohs and the sphinx? You know why? You know why? Think about it. Think about a black person's nose. These colonizers tried to whitewash our history, and now the Arabs are trying to claim everything about Egypt, and, and, and that's fine as long as we know the truth. Okay? Egypt or Kemet was black Africans. The word itself, Kemet, means black people. Now, they'll tell you mean black soul. No. Black people. Okay, it was black Africans, our ancestors who migrated all over this earth before any of them knew what a boat was. Y'all have to know who we are. Okay, we come from greatness and they have tried everything in their power to hide who we are from us because of the power that comes from knowing who we are and knowing the mystery but understand i'm not knocking you for being christian muslim or for following any other faith however i am asking you to never lose your tolerance for other human human beings for other humans who do not believe the same as you ancient africans kush kemet our ancestors believed oneself in everything of nature, meaning nature or the universe is divine and interconnected as into one. We are one. Most of the elements found on earth and in our bodies are also found in the universe. In fact, our bodies, our DNA have more atoms than there are stars in the universe. We are the universe. Understand who we are has been hidden in plain sight i.e the kingdom of god is within you it is it is when i speak of kush we know it's modern day ethiopia when i speak of kemet we know it's modern day egypt the image that we have of africa in our minds is distorted and we need to change that Africa, as it is today, is 54 different countries. However, it wasn't always 54 different countries. That happened with colonization, okay? We must look at Africa upside down and bottom side upwards, okay? As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. It came from the writings of Tehuti. You must remember who you are. Overstand, our legacy has been distorted, repackaged, and sold back to us. The Kush and Ethiopian civilizations lasted 62,500 years. The Kemet or the Egypt civilization lasted 36,525 years. Now, I'm American, okay? African-American. Now I'm in the United States. You know how old the United States is? 250 years. So they took all of our history and didn't teach us about it. Or they let someone else claim it. But we are now rising to claim our history. And they want to call it the woke agenda. Okay? So we're awakening. Do you really think They've told you everything when they didn't even want our ancestors to read. When the first civil rights movement was just 54 years ago. Do you really think America wants to teach our kids what we ought to be teaching them? Africa is the cradle of civilization. Okay. And the African woman is the mother of civilization. Like I've told y'all before on several of my other podcasts, I'm a born again African. And it ain't nothing 
that anyone could do about it because I accept who I am. That's the first part of my identity. I'm African and I'm American. Okay. I may not have been born in Africa, but Africa was born in me. Okay. So in another thing, our ancestors left everything in stone for us. They left evidence for us. Okay. They left everything in stone and on stone. Okay. Even Jesus, watch, watch this, watch this. Even Jesus in the Bible, in the new Testament, you know, he said, if his disciples held their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. This is how slick they was to even include that in the new Testament. All of our evidence is in stone. And I guess they, they crying out. Because the population or the numbers of Christianity, the members is decreasing. The population numbers for Christianity members, the numbers are decreasing. Okay. So our legacy has been distorted and repackaged. The writers of the New Testament knew our ancestors left everything in stone and the lengths and the depths they went to to hide our history from us is nearly unfathomable. But the beauty of the African mind is this, is that it's able to reset itself. Our cranium is different from everyone else's. So remember who you are. You are part of something so much bigger than you were ever taught and you have ever known. Remember who you are and know thyself. Remember that strong pull I talked about earlier in the podcast. Yes, it, it, it took a lot of study and inqu inquisition for me to learn exactly what it was. I now know that it was, I was being chosen by my ancestors to complete this journey of liberation and was placed on a pathway of my purpose to liberate others who want to be set free. Let me know, let me know how you feel in the comments. I know I didn't got a little excited and that's okay, but let me know how you feel in the, comments because I know I'm not by myself. I know I'm not by myself. So let me know. And with that being said, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. The visual podcast is available on YouTube and you can find the audio version of the podcast on your favorite podcast platforms. As always, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me. This has been the realest home girl, aka the Black Hummingbird, Valerie Wynn, and I will talk to you all on the next Melanin Reset Podcast. Peace.